Hey, greetings, performance reviews, where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. And today we're gonna to talk about dry carpet cleaning. This is kind of a controversial subject because a lot of people aren't familiar with it. And a lot of people also have tried it with mixed results. So the purpose of dry carpet cleaning is not really to remove stains, though it can do that to a limited capacity. The purpose of dry carpet cleaning is to preserve your carpet by encapsulating embedded dirt into a bigger object that acts like a sponge, soaks up the dirt, and then gets sucked up into your vacuum. This, this sort of dry system, why the powder is actually slightly wet, and you are going to use a pre-spray of some sort that is lightly uh, moist. This sort of thing usually dries within about an hour. You want to let it sit for at least 45 minutes. Now, as you can see, my carpet doesn't have any stains on it. So doing my maintenance, my six month or three month maintenance, depending on, again, how dirty your house is and what kind of vacuum you're using and all sorts of other factors. Uh, this is a lot more convenient when there's no stains than pulling out the big extractor. So we're gonna try this today in my house. Quick note, I have no relation to Orc uh, or Lindhouse. These are just happen to be the products that I have most available to do this with. So that's my relation with them. Oh, here comes the cat. <laughs> the cat is going to inspect this, of course. So the first thing we're gonna do is vacuum the area. And you wanna do this across hatch. So left to right, forward to back. So basically you're double vacuuming the area first. You wanna start off and do that with a real strong vacuum. Now, if you are doing something like a Dyson or Shark or, you know, your Bissell, your, your bagless vacuum, your bagless vacuums tend to leave a lot of dirt deep down your carpet. So if you're using something that's not CRI certified or is not a deep cleaner, the results with this won't be as good, particularly with bagless vacuums. Basically, the machine will need to be serviced afterwards. I don't, I don't recommend using a bagless vacuum for this system. Uh, so if you can use a bag vacuum, if you can use something like a central vacuum or a canister vacuum, that will be even better. Um, and that, that gets kind of the first point is this stuff is carpet and rug certified, uh, institute certified for pickup. So the, this is carpet safe. And that's the big advantage to this. So let's get to the actual cleaning process. So I'm gonna kind of go through it. So first, you are going to, this bottle's brand new, lightly mist the area. That's it. We're not saturating the area. If you do have a stain, you could, a little bit more of that might help, but you're not doing a whole lot. Next, we're gonna open this carpet uh, powder, and you wanna make sure you seal this up real good afterwards. And here's the carpet powder itself. You can see here, it's just a white dust and you just want to sprinkle it. They say no more than a quarter apart. So you want to sprinkle it evenly on like so. And now it's time to work it in, in the area. Now they say to do like a four by four area at a time. I generally do the whole room I'm doing and then work it in. Now there's a couple of different ways to work this powder in. You can go to your local Oryx store and rent an Orbiter or buy an Orbiter. Um, you can use an EBRM machine. Uh, numerous ways to do it, or you can use your Linhouse nozzle. My Linhouse nozzle has a provision for dry carpet pickup. So what you do is you put this insert in, and uh, remember to take that insert out when you're done. And now we're good to go for dry carpet cleaning. We're going to start off by very thoroughly vacuuming the area. Make sure you go over each spot at least two times. All right, the next step is to just sprinkle the powder around. You'll have to take several scoops in that white thing. Sprinkle it around. It'll look like this when you're done with that. All right, now it's time to work it in with either your Auric Orbiter, uh, your CRB machine, or in this case, I'm going to use a Linhouse Powerhead. You see, you just want to work it into the carpet the best you can. And sometimes you have to go over a spot two or three times and make sure there's no streaking if you can. As you can see, this is kind of what it's going to look like when you're done. Now you just play the waiting game. You wait 45 minutes to an hour. Now the other thing you can do with this is you can use it on upholstery. So if you want to pre-spray and work it in with upholstery just with like a hand brush, you can. I'd recommend that you do your stairs first if you have carpeted stairs. 
It's kind of the messiest part, and you'll get residual stuff stuck in the machine. Don't do it last, because there'll be residual powder stuck in the machine that will get everywhere. Here's what it looked like afterwards, though. Now, your carpet's going to look a little funny why this stuff is drying and it's been worked in, but it will return to normal once you vacuum it out. Now, just like when you pre-vacuumed, you want to vacuum very thoroughly, very slowly, and you want to go over everything a couple times if you can, and really get that carpet powder out of your carpet. Keep in mind how much carpet powder you put down. I use the four pound bucket, there's also an eight pound bucket, and I put three out of four of those pounds down in three of my rooms. So keep that in mind, you gotta get that stuff out. And that's where the good vacuum comes in handy. After you've felt that you've gotten most of it out, it's time to change your bag or maintenance your vacuum. Well, let's see where all that powder went. So there's about three pounds of powder in here now. Um, you can see it kind of all gets stuck to the side. I think this is an illustration of kind of why you want to change your vacuum bag afterwards. Now, interesting enough, with the central vacuum, um, it's not really going to affect this because the surface area is so great that it has to move through this. Now, for most of you, you'll have a regular vacuum. Make sure you change your vacuum bag when you're done. And if you want to wait till you do one more vacuuming with it, do so, but don't go past that. And here are the results. Everything looks really good. The carpet, you can feel a difference when you touch the carpet. And here is the couch cushion I did as well. I don't know how much it shows up in the video, but it's a whole shade lighter. Here's a detailed look at the same section where we started the video at. Uh, the carpet looks great. It, what I can't really describe on camera is it feels good when you touch it. It feels freshly shampooed. Uh, and that's because it really is the way this stuff works. It also has a nice pleasant smell, but it's pretty much from my nose. Um, at least it's off gassed uh, by now. I can't smell it uh, anymore. So it's not overwhelmingly in your face, which is something I like about this. Um, so if you're sensitive to volatile gases and things like that, that might be a positive of using this system. Uh, the other thing is that it's fairly pet safe. Uh, if your animals want to walk on it afterwards, it's really not going to hurt anything. Um, you know, speaking of animals, oh, oh, there's a cat. Uh, so, um, you know, it's not going to hurt them. Uh, my only suggestion is when you're doing this, I would put a pair of sh clean shoes on, wipe them down if they've been outside the house, you know, while you're doing this. Because uh, otherwise it's going to feel like you've been at the beach with the uh, stuff in between your toes. Um, keep that in mind. Now, I chose to use my central vacuum to vacuum before and afterwards with this. And one of the things that I decided to do was to use a different head. Just out of curiosity, I wanted to see what that was going to be like. See, because I had suspected I was going to need to clean it afterwards. Uh, but to be honest with you, I just vacuumed my whole living room, which is a little over a thousand square feet. Um, there's really no visible dust or anything in this nozzle. Um, so I guess that was a unnecessary thought is um, you don't have to clean necessarily clean your brush afterwards, which is nice. I know with a lot of the weaker vacuums that I've done this with in the past, um, I've, like I said, I've talked about that I've worked at an Oric store before. You know, compared to using an Oric, it all just sucked it up in the system. So yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with this. This was a quick and easy uh, do for me with the equipment I had on hand. Uh, you really could do this with pretty much any central vacuum nozzle and what you'd want to do is just unplug your central vacuum. Not every canister nozzle is going to support this. Only some canisters can you turn the suction completely off and then use the nozzle. Again, this is a feature that's pretty unique to Lindhouse. Um, I really can't think of any others that do that. So for those of us who don't have a nozzle that's capable of working this in, uh, you can go get an auric orbiter, you can get a, uh, one of those big carpet machines. You can use the host system, has them available for rent. Uh, I know Simplicity and Recar used to make one. I don't think they didn't make one anymore. And then of course, SIBO also makes one as well. So I'll put links to all those things below. So if you need to get one of those machines, you can look into it. Also I'm gonna of course have links below to the chemical as well. And uh, that's gonna benefit the channel. So I really appreciate you all watching. 
I hope you found this video informative, uh, and I hope this answers whether or not dry cleaning is right for you. Have yourself a wonderful day.